More details have emerged about the United Kingdom's Tempest Next Generation Stealth Fighter, being developed under the Global Combat Air Program GCAP. While many specifics of the aircraft are still being decided by the three partner nations the United Kingdom Japan and Italy, UK emphasizes need to arm Tempest stealth fighter with larger, longer-range air-to-air missiles. Giving the Tempest bigger sticks is seen as critical to keeping pace with adversary developments, particularly the rapid pace of China's air power evolution. By this time, the Meteor design will be around 40 years old and new Chinese missiles will challenge Western fighters in the Pacific. The PL-15 is already in widespread service, and China is also working on further reaching weapons, including the much bigger PL-17, a very long-range missile that may well be intended primarily to target high-value assets, like tankers and airborne early warning aircraft. Looking beyond Meteor, comments from UK defense officials seem to indicate that they need something new to arm the Tempest, in terms of overall performance to meet the projected threat. A revamped Meteor might still not meet the performance requirements of the missile envisaged for Tempest. The Tempest 2 looks like it will be a notably big fighter, and it will almost certainly need to be, not least to accommodate the larger and longer-range air-to-air missiles that are being earmarked for it. The House of Commons Committee report on GCAP provides recommendations to the UK government. Of particular interest is the section outlining the capabilities of the Tempest, with the proviso that the precise capabilities of the new aircraft remain to be determined. As to the key requirements for the Tempest, which will drive the design of the new aircraft, the Chief of the Air Staff Air Chief Marshal Sir Richard Knighton laid these out to the committee. Some of them are to be expected, including longer range, which is reflected in the large overall size of the fighter, at least in the concept artworks models and mock-ups that have appeared so far. Knighton also says that the Tempest will feature improved stealth, without providing more details about how that will be achieved, and also notes the central importance of data fusion. Indeed, fusing and integrating the vast amount of information that will be available to the aircraft will be the main difference between the Tempest and previous generations of combat aircraft. Intriguingly, Knighton also said it was absolutely possible that an uncrewed version of the Tempest platform could be developed in the longer term. As to the larger and longer-range air-to-air missile, this will be carried as part of a bigger payload than offered by current combat aircraft. In the past, statements about the UK's future combat air system FCAS program, a wide-ranging UK air combat initiative that includes the Tempest, have referenced next-generation weapons as well as uncrewed platforms, networks and data sharing, and more. However, very few if any details have been provided about these weapons, making the reference to a large long-range air-to-air missile all the more interesting. Currently, the longest-range air-to-air missile available to the United Kingdom and Italy is the pan-European MBDA Meteor, which arms the Eurofighter Typhoon and will be integrated on the F-35. The ramjet-powered Meteor was designed to have superior range and overall kinematic performance than the US-made AIM-120 AMROM, which also arms the Typhoon and F-35. Range claims for the Meteor differ widely and the actual figure is a closely guarded secret. However, the missile is generally assumed to be able to hit targets up to 130 miles away from the launch aircraft. The Meteor, AMROM and AAM-4 all utilize active radar homing, providing a fire-and-forget capability, but mid-course updates are required to squeeze the most out of the missile and make long-range engagements reliable. The three nations in the GCAP program are far from the only ones pursuing programs for new long-range air-to-air weapons. In recent months, the US Navy has introduced, at least on a limited level, an air-launched version of the standard missile 6SM-6 under the AIM-174B designation. The range of this missile is classified but should be far in excess of that of the AIM-120D, probably at least double and perhaps even triple the range, against large targets. Meanwhile, a joint US Navy and US Air Force program is jointly developing the AIM-260, a new air-to-air -air missile that is intended to offer far greater range than the current AMROMs, as well as other new and improved capabilities, but will importantly provide these in a missile with similar dimensions to the AIM-120. The West's development of these missiles, and others, has been driven to a large extent by the appearance of very long-range air-to-air weapons in Russia and China. According to data from the manufacturer, the Russian Air-37M, at least in its export form, can defeat some types of aerial targets at a range of up to 124 miles. 
This likely refers to only larger, less agile, aircraft targets and is very much a sales brochure figure, with all the caveats that entails. Nevertheless, the missile has proven to be a significant threat in the war in Ukraine. Meanwhile, the U.S. Air Force has publicly said that the emergence of the Chinese PL-15, a long-range air-to-air missile that may feature a dual-pulse rocket motor, was a key factor in the decision to start the AIM-260 program. The Royal United Services Institute Defense and Security Think Tank determines that the PL-15 outranges the U.S.-made AIM-120D AMROM series and has a comparable maximum range to the Meteor. The PL-15 is already in widespread service, and China is also working on further reaching weapons, including the much bigger PL-17, a very long-range missile that may well be intended primarily to target high-value assets, like tankers and airborne early warning aircraft. Even more alarming for the West is the potential for the carriage of larger numbers of even bigger air-to-air -air missiles in the capacious weapons bay of the new Chinese combat aircraft that appeared last month, and which has been tentatively dubbed J-36. The large size of this aircraft suggests an overarching concern with long endurance and comparatively massive internal volume to accommodate a very large fuel load, as well as plentiful large weapons. The Tempest is expected to be in service by 2035, but there will be plenty more challenges, both technical and political. Even if it survives potential political hurdles, the process of creating an all-new fighter, especially one incorporating stealth technologies, dictates lengthy development times and high costs. The Tempest is also planned to be supported by advanced uncrewed aircraft, not to mention new generation air-launched weapons, all of which bring their own elements of risk and yet more costs. Increasingly, the requirements for internal weapons carriage are a very major driver behind the size of the platform, when it comes to next-generation fighters. This appears to be the case for the J-36 and almost certainly applies to the crewed combat jet at the center of the U.S. Air Force's next-generation air dominance and GAD initiative. The Tempest, too, looks like it will be a notably big fighter, and it will almost certainly need to be, not least to accommodate the larger and longer-range air-to-air missiles that are being earmarked for it. <laughs>